Today on Nin Chronicles, we're going to be taking a look at Snipper Clips. Now, since Snipper Clips is a co op game, I'm gonna need some help for this, so uh, just excuse me for one second. Hey Shane, what are you doing? Can you make this quick? I'm in the middle of something really important here. Well, I'm gonna be playing Snipper Clips, and I could really use somebody to help me out. What do you say? Snipper Clips? Isn't that a co op game? It sure is! Co op with you? What? Why do you give me that look for? What? Why do you think something's gonna go wrong? Shane? Snipper Clips is a creative physics puzzler that was launched on the Switch eShop alongside the console in 2017. The game was created by SFB Games, formerly known as the Super Flash Brothers. Just like the name suggests, the Super Flash Brothers created lots of Flash games and movies before making Snipper Clips. Snipper Clips had started out as a game called Friend Shapes, which was the product of a game jam, where the two brothers developed the prototype in a very short amount of time. Impressive. Sometime after this original presentation, the game was picked up by Nintendo, where it was renamed and given a small redesign. It's a good thing too, as much as I like the glasses here, I really love how expressive the characters in the final game are. The way the game plays out is that Snip and Clip here will need to cut each other up to solve a plethora of puzzles. They can rotate, squat, and stretch out to help fine-tune the shapes needed to win. They can't go overboard though, or else they'll blink out and have their shapes reset. If mistakes are made, a quick press of a button can undo the last cut, and holding it down will regenerate the shape altogether. The game is supposed to be played cooperatively, but if you're short on friends, you can swap between the two characters by yourself. It's a tougher challenge, but it can be done. The game has several modes of play to choose from. The star attraction is the world mode. There's three worlds here, all themed after something different, and they all have plenty of puzzles to do. There's two different types of puzzles that you always find. There's shape match, where you have to cut the characters up to fit them into the outline, and there's make the cut, where you cut alongside the dotted line. Besides those two, what you'll be doing will change up from world to world. You might guide a hamster, assemble a race car, grow a flower, pop balloons, carry goo, help a frog, and on and on and on. There's no shortage of unique levels. Most of these levels expect you to screw up, so there's a reset button usually on hand. This funky flooring is something you'll see a lot too. Snip and Clip can stand here just fine, but level objects will pass right through. Oh, hey, be careful! You'll notice when you first select a world that about half the panels are open. Solve five puzzles and you'll unlock the green star level. This will prove to be something more challenging, but once you beat it, you'll unlock the next world along with the rest of the levels. Solve a total of ten puzzles and that'll unlock the red star level. This will be an even harder challenge, and the reward here is more levels for the party mode. Which brings me to the party mode. This has levels specifically designed for four players in mind. If you short that amount, you'll need at least one other buddy for this mode. Switching between four characters is just too too much stress for one person. There are a few puzzles that resemble those found in the world mode, but for the most part you'll need everybody working together to get through these challenges. If you're tired of cooperating, then start up the blitz mode. This is where everyone competes in minigames. There's no character swapping in this mode, so once again you'll need at least one friend to get the ball rolling. Like in Hoops, which has you bouncing around a basketball. Hockey is a classic favorite, where the characters will be sliding around the ice to get the button in the goal. Dojo is where you can finally be malicious with your snipping. Cut away to rivals in an effort to be the last one standing. It should go without saying, but the heal button is disabled in this minigame. Luckily, there are health pickups floating around every once in a while. This mode also seems to rotate between stages too, so if you're yearning for revenge, this can shake things up. You know, playing these team-based ones, the games will pit snip and clip against each other, but it seems the blue and purple players don't really need to commit to a side. It looks like they can gang up on one player, or swap sides between points, or just be agents of chaos in general. All right, is uh, that it? Is the episode over? I can't have covered everything so soon, can I? Oh, that's right, I haven't! Snipper Clips later received DLC in the form of Snipper Clips Plus. This adds an extra two worlds in the world mode, which in turn adds more levels to the party mode. After you beat a couple levels in the new worlds, you'll be able to start any completed challenge as random shapes. If you thought solving the levels before was getting too easy, this should help motivate you to replaying those old favorites. 
The DLC also doubles the amount of Blitz Mode minigames. Territory will have the players stamping wildly to see who can have most of the artboard covered before the time runs out. If you get clipped up too much, slide into the healing areas on the side to get your shape back. In Roundup, you'll gather fireflies to satisfy the glass jars. The bigger the fly, the more it's worth. They don't tend to stay in one place easily, so you'll need to keep them from flying out of the jars too. Keep Away is another chaotic game. You are basically the only safe spot for these jewels to land on. The walls and floor are pretty much non-existent. It's a delicate balance of offense and defense. Do you sabotage the other players, or do you do your best to keep your own jewels safe? There's also an entirely new mode added with the stamp mode. This resembles the territory minigame, except here you can create art. Or at least you're supposed to. Dip your characters in the ink at the bottom and make your mark on the canvas. The game will remind you that you can't actually save your pictures in the game, but you're supposed to use the Switch's capture button instead. Alright, now we've really come to the end. Snipper Clips was a digital-only release at the start, but if you prefer a physical copy, then that's available too. The retail version comes with all of the content in the original game and the DLC right out of the box. Snipper Clips is great fun, and I especially recommend playing it with a buddy to get the best experience. And if you can get two more for the four-player modes, it's even better. It's all the fun of playing with scissors and none of the danger of getting a paper cut. No, no, Wait, no. Come back. no. You were snipping when you should have been clipping. Oh, Shane, I, I can be better, I promise. No!